Hello friends, today I'm here with a very interesting video and I'm going to tell you which are some new words, different phrases which we can use so that your English will look more like business, more like professional. I mean, we will, we will take your English to one notch high, one notch upper. And these are some of the words which are most commonly used by some great and fluent communicators. I'm going to tell you all these 10 different phrases which you can replace with ordinary words. And if you can do that while speaking, definitely you will make a good impression. So don't go anywhere. Stick with this video. At the end, I have a very important session about how to remember these words and how to use these words while actually talking because most of the words which I'm going to tell you, you will forget. But I have a unique method for this which will help you to memorize those words and use them at the right place. Let's jump in. Well, friends, as you can see here, I have said corporate or business communication. Many a times we use ordinary words and they just are been a, like a cliche. I mean, they are used by everyone very frequently. Why not to upgrade ourselves and use better words? So here I am, I'm going to tell you, but uh, I want you to think. I just, I'm not just going to go, come and tell you. I want you to think, guess the answer so that you will be actively involved. If I'm just passively speaking, you will watch my video for a couple of minutes. I don't know, some of you may have even left the video also. But if you will, if you are still with me, then what may happen is after some time, you will be just staring at the YouTube screen, your mobile screen, and then you will quit. I don't want that. I want you to involve in this video. Okay, so these are some of the words or phrases which you can use. So let's start. Here I go. First one is here. So as you can see here, the word is very sincere and hardworking. Suppose you want to explain someone that he's very sincere and hardworking, but everyone uses that. Instead of that, which word you can use? Guess it. Yeah, I said guess it. You can use a better word which will look more polished, which will look more advanced, which will look more professional, more attractive, which is the word exactly. And the word is diligent. You can use this word diligent okay oh well now this is not over the next step is there you have to use this word in a sentence a proper sentence i will use it but in the comments now i'm going to give you one word you have to use this word in a proper sentence in the comment and let us have healthy discussion whether the word is properly used or not i want everyone to discuss in the comment so that we can actually see how this word is used come on Okay, I will make a sentence. Um, I think Sachin works very diligently. Uh, I don't have any complaints against him. Right? So this is the way I have used. You also try. Let's jump in now. The second word. Here we go. Again, I'm going to share the screen. The next word. Think about your answer. Think which will be the answer. Pull your strings, pull your strings. Make your brain think about this. And then only I'm going to display or disclose the answer. The word is a talkative or a person who is excessively talkative person. So what is that person called? Uh, well, think, here I go. The person is called as outgoing <laughs> or extrovert, all right? Okay, so how we can use this in a sentence? Come on, use it. You can say that, well, um, I'm not a kind of outgoing person who loves to mingle with people. Yeah, I done it. Your turn now, write in the comments, second sentence from your side. Hmm? Yeah. One more important thing, no negative commenting. Okay, if someone has constructed a wrong sentence, you should not negatively comment that person. You should help that person. Okay? Yeah. Third one now. Here I go. The word is smiling after achievement. I mean, after, of course, after you achieve something, you smile. And what, what do we call that? What do we call that expression when someone is smiling? Oh, he was very happy when he achieved. 
Well, this is commonly used. Why not to use a better word? Why not to use the word? He was beaming with pride. What was your guess? Same, no? Well, uh, how many of you got it correct? Show me your hands. I know you can't do that. But write in the comments, how many of you got all these things correct, all the words correct? Okay, so make a sentence now. <clears throat> well, ha, huh, I can make it like this way. That after securing 90% in his exams, I saw Rahul beaming with pride. Not Rahul also, his parents also were beaming with pride. Of course, parents are more uh, proud of their children than the child itself. So this is one word, okay? Okay, let us move forward. Now the next one. Here we go. Overcoming difficulties and moving ahead. Overcoming the difficulties and moving ahead. Now here we can we usually say that well he's very hard working and he has overcome many difficulties. Or, or we can say that uh, he's a never give up person. All right, but can we use a better word? How he has moved ahead. How he has moved ahead, I'm asking you. Okay, so how it can be explained? We can explain it as forged ahead. Forged ahead, a better word rather than using common words. Forged ahead. Forged ahead means what a person who has struggled, fought, not given up, and then he has moved ahead. Forged ahead. Better word, right? Great. Let us use in a sentence. Well, now. Um, Despite of all the difficulties, Mr. Amitabh Bachchan forged ahead in his career. And I, I love Amitabh Bachchan. How many of you love Amitabh Bachchan? Write in the comments. I love him. Because not only because of his acting, but he has really forged ahead in his life with a lot of struggle. Let's move forward. Next one is engrossed in thoughts. Engrossed in thoughts or distracted also, we can say sometimes busy with some previous work also. Okay, so in that case, what we can say? I was engrossed in my thoughts. I was, what? We, we aren't able to use the right. We can say, yeah, I was thinking something else. Or if uh, someone tells that, have you done that work? Now, what do we say? No, I was busy with some other work. So instead of using these simple sentences, which are commonly used, why don't we use a better word? And the word is preoccupied with. Well, I was preoccupied with some thoughts. Well, I was preoccupied, when you want to use in this way, uh, with some work yesterday, so I couldn't do that work. Preoccupied. Make a sentence yourself now and tell me. All right? Come on. Let's move ahead now. The next word. Here we go. Difficulty or hard problems to handle. There are certain problems in our life which are very difficult to handle. They are hard problems. And what do we use? We say, I mean, that was a difficult problem to solve. I mean, hard nuts to crack. We say, no, something like this. So instead of that, what better word can be used? And the word is here. Thorniest problems. Thorniest. All of you know thorns. Okay. Uh, rose has thorns. Thorniest problems means very difficult problems to solve. Thorniest problem. Now, let us use in a sentence, we can say like, well, mm, this was one of the thorniest problems I have ever come across. It was very difficult to deal with. How is it? Better? It looks better actually. See, when I say that, when you are using better words, you look more beautiful, you look more handsome, you look more advanced. That's magic of English language. Okay, so let us move ahead. Now, next one is lots of information. Suppose you have lots of information. Nowadays, you can see on internet. As far as English communication is concerned, there is, lot, there, are a lot of, there is a lot of information available over there. And what we can say, everyone uses this word. Instead of that, can we use the word drowning in information? Don't you feel it's better? It, it's more attractive, drowning in information. We can say, nowadays we are drowning in information. I mean, it is too much and we don't know which one to take. Better, right? Come on, you also do it. Let's move forward. All right, here we go. Quickly go through it. We say that 
quickly uh, just go through this document. So instead of using the word quickly go through it, can we use a better word? And yes, I found a better word while reading a book and I have jotted it down and this is here. And the word is quickly breeze through it. Quickly breeze. All of you know the breeze. Breeze means that air which comes, that's a breeze. Quickly breeze through it means quickly move through it. Breeze through it. Better word. Looks better. More attractive. Use it. Okay. And high pace. High pace means speed. High pace. So usually we say that, well, nowadays the life is very high paced and everyone is busy and a lot of competition. So instead of that, can we use a better word think? Think, think. I'm giving you time. Think. Yeah, what is that? Okay, so I'm going to give you now. The word is breakneck pace. Breakneck pace. Means it's really very fast and very difficult to cope with this pace. Breakneck pace. Well, let us use it. Well, the changes which are happening in the field of technology, they are at breakneck pace. They are breakneck pace. Looks good, right? If you can use those words in presentation, how will it look like? Wow, you will get a lot of accolades. So you can use these words. Okay, so now the point I told you that I'm going to tell you about how to remember them. There are steps now which I have given you. Wait, now listen to me. First is write a sentence. Just That's the reason why I told you at the beginning. You have to write it down. Don't say, oh, I'll use it. No. Don't think in mind. Think on paper. First step, write them down. All these words and phrases which I have given you, first use them in a sentence and write down that sentence. First step. When you write down, you get more clarity about, oh, okay, how this is used in this. And your neocortex part of the brain comes into action. Neocortex part. It's called as prefrontal cortex area this part of the brain. So you get more clarity about how to use it because you have written it down. First step. Second step is read those words regularly in your notebook. You have to maintain a vocabulary notebook. Now, not only read them in the notebook, but read regularly. When you read regularly, now these kind of words are not always found in textbooks or anywhere. These words are found in blogs and newspapers, but they're spread all across. They are not available in one place. Don't try to search and don't ask ready-made. That's the reason why I don't give ready-made. They are scattered everywhere. And next one is listen a podcast because now the, that word must be always with you. The more that, the more you listen that word, the more you will use it. Okay. One more thing I want to tell you, which I have not written here, but which is obvious. No need to write. That is the last step I will tell you. Don't forcefully use it. Now, before step three and four, we can say that first of all, you have to speak. If you don't speak, what is the use of all those words? Uh, right? <laughs> well, it's like you have a dumbbell at home and you don't use it. What is the use then? So use those words. Hmm? And for to use those, you have to speak up. You have to speak up. All right. So guys, don't forcefully use it. Means if you try to forcefully use those words, your English will sound very unnatural, very synthetic, and very purposely and forcefully constructed sentences and people can figure it out. So don't do that. These words will come out naturally to you. Have patience, don't disturb yourself. What I mean to say is what happens now? You will say, sir, I have new 10 phrases now. I'm not able to use them. What is this? I mean, do I have memory problem or what? Don't say like this because you can't uh, uh, just know the word and use the word. No, you know the word and you understand the word. If someone is someone has used that word, that's fine. But you know the word and if you want to use it, it will take time. It will take a lot of time. It will take a lot of exposure and it, it will take a lot of uh, uh, all these steps you have to follow regularly and then it will come. But if you pressurize yourself and stress yourself, it will never come to you and you will again forget. So this is a psychological part. All right, guys, so hope you're going to use these words and keep a separate journal for this and regularly use them. All right, friends, so my best wishes for this and I'm going to come with some better videos in future. 
so that you will be able to speak better English. Take care and bye-bye. Thank you.